Welcome to the Bowden Education Podcast Autumn Series, hosted by me, Catherine Carden. In our podcast, we talk to people who are making a positive and transformational impact in education in a whole range of different ways. These people are passionate, committed, and inspirational colleagues who have something to say. Today, I'm delighted to chat with Jonathan Coy about the importance of creating networks. Jonathan's an experienced head teacher and school leader and is now the CEO of Head Teacher Chat, which you must follow and look up on Twitter. He set this up to provide information and support for school leaders based upon his own experience of finding leadership as quite an isolating experience. With an ever-expanding following, Head Teacher Chats has now been named as one of the UK's top education influencers. Congratulations. And he works with schools across the country to ensure that they have information about the latest education products, linking companies to schools so that they can find the best products for their school. He's also a regular speaker about school leadership. So welcome, Jonathan. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. I can't wait to hear about your uh, views on networking. But first, before we do, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your career to date? Okay, so I'm Jonathan Coy, CEO of Head Teacher Chat. Um, my career today, I started off teaching in London, uh, but my story of why I became a teacher was before that. I, I was always interested in sport, so... When I was about 13, 14, I was, I was into athletics quite a lot. And I started then supporting all the younger children at the athletics club and started doing all their um, sessions and introducing them to athletics and doing teach them high jump, triple jump. And I absolutely loved it. And so when it came to what I wanted to do in the future, I wanted to do something with sport and teaching. So I went and did a sports science degree at St Mary's University College in London. And I then became a teacher. And I absolutely loved it. I, I just love teaching. I love the craft of teaching. I, I just love finding a better way to children to, to learn and actually finding how children sort of like develop themselves. So I'm always interested to sort of like to go much more deeper into the, the understanding how a particular child learns and making sure they have everything there for them to get the best in life. Um, and I'm always always interested in going to schools that are slightly um, challenging. So um, one of my first schools in um, London was Rockmount, and I loved the school, but it was it was um, a school that needed a lot of support and a lot of help. And but. I found some of the best teachers and the best mentors there. And I had a, a great mentor called Kathy Dalton who inspired me to do many things and challenged me to teach in different ways and supported me in my first stage of my career. So um, then I moved up to Norfolk in the year 1999 and I became um, a teacher in a school in, just outside Norwich um, called Kingsale Infant School. And I had seven years there, and, and I, again, I loved teaching there. And I, I was a assistant head there, and I moved on to deputy head, and then I moved up the career to head teacher to deputy CEO of Academy Trust in Norfolk. And um, I, I left two years ago to because I wanted to. I was getting uh, more and more concerned with the lack of support for head teachers in school. And I wanted to build a platform that could help them. And yeah, so like head teacher's role is quite a lonely role in school. And sometimes it's really hard to find um, a support that you could just ask questions. And it's, it's like um, any stage of your career. Sometimes you can't ask those questions in your school. Where do you ask those questions? You, and for head teachers, so like there's very few people in the school they can actually talk to and discuss ideas with. You might have the chair of governors, you might have the SLT, but there's not many more from that that you think, oh, I'm really thinking about this idea. How am I going to put this in place? And actually, 
what we did is on Twitter is people can ask those questions anonymously. They can ask it to a platform. So if you're a new head teacher um, coming onto Twitter and you haven't got many following, just tag us into a question and then we share it to a load of head teachers and they will come along with really good advice of what's happening and how they can help you. So um, that's a brief summary of my career today. And uh, we're now sort of like starting to have face-to-face -face conferences because we're really passionate about actually head teachers networking and talking to each other and discussing ideas and getting a rich group of people in the room discovering how other head teachers are working and what they're implementing and how what the best practice is going on and actually those are the best discussions you can have in a nice setting and you feel refreshed and you feel ready to go back and make an impact we were talking earlier about um why that conference is and actually sometimes you need the breathing space and you need to just go stop what are we doing? What's working well? How can we put something out in um, place into this school? And hopefully with um, creating a space that that could happen. Great. And um, moving back to that, um, I think there are a couple of things that I've picked out. The key thing is a space to ask questions without judgment. And I think finding that space is, is tricky. And it's not possible often for a head teacher or sometimes other teachers to go and ask colleagues because they that makes them very vulnerable or perhaps open to judgment around the quality of their practice or their capabilities. But also if you're asking other head teachers or the, a local authority or, you know, you, you are putting yourself out there, it's difficult to have that complete trust that there isn't an alternative agenda or you're not putting um, sort of your head on the block, if, if you like, by saying this. And you create that space. And I've, I've seen, I've, I follow you on Twitter and I've seen exactly what you mean. So the questions come out from a head teacher anonymously and lots and lots of responses pile back. Um, one perhaps that I responded just the other day, which was not very helpful about a list of leadership books when I said, I've got a lot. <laughs> um, I will write a list and put a picture of the list <laughs> up I promise um, you also said it's lonely and I mentioned that in the introduction to you about head teacher and being a leader sometimes being a really isolating experience I think teaching itself can be lonely and when I see that people always look at me with a raised eyebrow a little bit and like, why are you constantly around people? You couldn't be perhaps in a job where you're with so many people, but actually when you're teaching, it's you in the classroom. Yeah. You might have 30 little people or bigger people in the classroom, but actually it's you and it's quite lonely and isolating. Uh, no one's doing the exact job that you're doing. Even if you've got a year buddy or you've got a department of subjects, no one's teaching that subject or that curriculum to those particular children at any one time. So it is quite lonely, which brings me onto the question that I want to start with, and I know you're really keen on, on this. Um, but first of all, we're gonna talk about networks, but firstly, perhaps define for us what you see as a network. Uh, well, okay, we, we define it here as um, a safe place that people can have conversations with other like-minded professionals. And why then is it so important? Because when you hear the word networking, some people it sends a cold shudder down their spine, you know, it's used a lot. And I think networking and in the schmoozing kind of context of it is very different to creating a network. And why is it so important for teachers irrespective of where they're at in their career, right from early career, right through to head teachers, why is it so important for them to have networks? Well, be honest, the, the best way, uh, the best professional development you can have is talking to like-minded professionals and actually sharing ideas and having those, those conversations. The best conversation is face-to-face -face and actually sitting in a group and saying, I've just had a... a horrible day doing this what shall I do and then you get the bouncing of the ideas and you come back to you and say oh yeah I haven't tried that I'm, I might go and try that 
but the safe space for that is so important because actually there's no judgment. There's no, um, as you were saying earlier, so I'd like, uh, you go to other groups and you think actually you're being judged all the time, all the way through the group, uh, if it's a local authority or neighboring schools or, or whatever network you got. The point of this is actually you got a place that you can share your ideas and bounce ideas off other people. Mm. And it's something we're quite passionate about. We, we do do this connections in different ways. We've got the face to face, which, yeah, I mean, in this last two or three years, so like it's, it's been missing, but actually we need to start talking and chatting and promoting our profession. But it's, it's a wonderful profession. It is one of the best professions in the world. You get so much joy from it, but we shouldn't have people struggling and not having any space to go. And so we're trying to do that for our professional network. Mm. And, and you're right, it is a fantastic profession and it brings so much joy. But I think at, that, at the current time, for a lot of people, that joy is very much clouded. And, it, and I think when you are struggling, and um, finding things hard and you can't see the wood for the trees. You really need somewhere to go, but you don't know where to go. And it's a sort of vicious spiral after that, that you become more and more detached yeah. from colleagues um, as you become sort of lost, I suppose, in, in seeking your answers and, and self-doubt. And I think teachers are super critical of themselves. Um, and I'm one one of those ones. <laughs> yeah, I I, th I think it's quite common with with teachers that we you know we care. That's why we're doing what we do. So when things aren't going quite well, or or, or you um you don't get the results that you had hoped for, you you blame yourself, and it's really tricky to know how to to move on from that. Networks are great ideas. I'm an absolute advocate for having networks. Um, you make lots of connections, you get lots of perspectives from them. I worry about solely teachers gaining their development, and I think networking is part of development. I worry a lot when teachers seek, the only development they seek is within house or within an academy trust, because I think they're just hearing the same. Yeah. Um, so really important, we also know that teachers have a huge workload. We've heard, we've read, we've seen the attrition rates um, that are linked to this. So teachers will often say, yeah, yeah, I get it. I see, yeah, I'd like to, I just don't have the time. How would you respond to that? Um, well, there's, there's a couple of ways in some ways. Uh, the social network, um, so you've got Twitter, you've got Facebook, uh, you've got LinkedIn, and there's a whole range of um, support within that. So on a, a daily, every day we get about 10 messages from school leaders saying, can I have help from this? Can I have help from this? And it, it is a bit of a minefield on certain things. So the other day we had um, someone say, can I have a PE scheme? And in some ways, we're sort of like the middle okay have you spoken to this person could they really got a good PE scheme um maybe go and have a, have a chat with them and see if they can help you so we do a lot of that connecting people so it's, it is a minefield out there because um where do you go I mean you you look on um support for on Google which we used to do a long time ago you might not get the answer so if someone's having a big crisis about a member of staff and it's a, a sort of like not quite a HR issue, but if it is a HR issue, they come to us and say, look, I'm really struggling with this. I'm not really quite sure. The advice I've got from HR is this. I don't feel right with me. Mm. Where, where, where can, can you ask that to your followers and say, what do you think? And actually, they come out and said, "No, that's probably not quite right." You've got to, you've got to look at the answer and say, "Actually, what what is right for yourself?" So you've got to 
understand that whole process. And um, I'm not advising anyone to go against HR advice, but sometimes you just want that um, friend to say, okay, they're giving you the right advice. That's fine. And so this is the whole point about networks. And actually, it's a, away from your academy trust or school a question in a safe place and you can get a pretty good answer from the followers from that and then we also um, facilitate that ourselves so we do phone calls to head teachers and say okay I reckon you need to do this or if someone's in real crisis then we'd go okay go and talk to education support they've got a big service there that can help you out they will help you going through the next stage of what you need to do. So we facilitate those conversations because some people can't see the wood from the trees. Yeah. And I think as well, I think for me, when we talk about networking and taking time to access, whether it's a, a live stream or live chat on um, social media or in just engaging with social media, uh, dropping along to a webinar where you meet new people and hear new perspectives people always say oh gee I'd love to go I just don't have the time or oh, it's in the evening I'm so tired when I get home so on and so forth I actually feel that when you despite however tired you feel or busy you feel or overwhelmed you feel when you engage with these things actually what happens is you're lifted and feel really inspired so I always give people the message or try and send the message but give it a go don't be nervous don't mm. don't make excuses if you like in that you're too tired I'm not saying that's an excuse but you know sometimes you do I certainly do anyway make excuses for myself not to do things that I really begin to believe um, you know, I can't possibly, can I, because I've got this to do, but actually prioritizing networking as part of your development, you will, I feel, see a massive difference in your own mindset. And I don't know how you feel when you engage, if you're sort of, you know, so busy, so tired, you'd rather not do it, but do it. And then you leave feeling quite lifted and inspired. Oh, absolutely. We, we, um, we have an SLT group that we support and they're all new to head teachers or SLT and you have to really encourage them to come along and actually when they're there you can see the, the weight goes off their sh mm. shoulders and the monkey's gone off their back for a while and actually they can just have a conversation because the other part of this um, a head teacher's role is you're worrying all the time. You don't actually stop. It's, it is there's a, a Stephen Tierney puts it in a much better way. It's sort of like um, you you're working from eight till seven in the evening, but the rest of the time you're worrying about what other things are doing. So you're worrying about if staff are going to be in, their children are, are safe, and things. A whole range of things. And so sometimes you just need that breathing space to actually say, okay, let's breathe, let's stop for a moment and let's reflect where we are and how what we can do and then share offload some of those concerns because it's an endless job and um we just need to give them a space to actually feel lifted feel like they're doing a good job um as we were talking earlier it's sort of like we need to create this um profession that is actually a much more positive profession of what we're doing and part of this is actually getting networking again and I think that's part of um, the navigation of the networks, particularly social networks online. It's about finding those positive networks and learning how to be a little bit discerning about who you're listening to, who you're following. Um, because for every positive, there's some quite negative voices out there. And it is about learning to do that. So finding those positive networks that you can hook into and then being disciplined about making the time to to access them. Yeah, and absolutely, you're right. There, there are some negative um, voices on the Twitter. You you just got to rise above that and actually show the positive side of what's happening in schools, and keep on showing those things and keep on giving the, the positive messages. And it, it's hard sometimes. Yeah, it's 
but we're we're also about well-being. So we we're doing all the messages about okay, looking after yourselves, making sure uh, you're going for walks and things. I know they're simple things, but when you're in a busy time in school, you don't always have time to actually think I'm going to go for a walk. And sometimes we we put the running gear in the back of the car. We're taking the photo of us running on on the marshes or something like that. But actually, that's a positive message. That's an important message that we've got to say. You you can have time to do those other things as well. In fact, you must have time to do those other things as well, because if you're not well, you can't lead a school. You can't lead children. You can't be your most productive self. So it is looking after yourself. So there might be people listening to this that think, yeah, okay, I get it. I really need to um, develop some of my networks. It's something I'm going to do this academic year. But they don't know where to start or they don't have the confidence to reach out. So we, I know of lots of people that are kind of Twitter lurkers. So they'll say, oh, I saw that on Twitter. But they've never written on Twitter. They've never they've never engaged at all. They lurk, which is fine. If, if people are learning that way, that's absolutely fine. But do you have any sort of advice that, and it could be for early career teachers about to embark on their career or people that are stepping for their first year into headship or anywhere in between, any advice you'd give for sort of how to start networks, who to follow? Have you got any good tips and good starters of friendly um people to follow and how to get that confidence because I think it's hard to write your first sort of reply or say yes I've got some advice or yeah I'll chat to you any anything you'd say okay the, the, one of the best ones if you're a new person to Twitter there's some great hashtags to follow and um just joining those hashtags tiny voice um talks on Tuesday with um Torah yeah. and um, absolutely brilliant. So, if you're new to Twitter, join in that hashtag. She sends out a tweet in the morning and just say hi. And that's all you have to do. And keep doing that. And then what will happen is there will be people that you start talking to and they say hi back and you have start having conversations. And actually, that can lead into a much bigger thing. And um, James Grocott on Wednesday does follow back Wednesday. The same sort of thing. So start engaging in those hashtags. And then, look, we're, we will connect with anyone. We, we want to, if you, you're a small voice on Twitter or Facebook, we've got a Facebook group as well, just come say hello. We're more than happy to have a, have a conversation. If there's any questions you want to ask, just ask us in direct messages. As I say, we get quite a few. We answer them all. We we try to connect with as many people as possible. And if you want to know some people that, that in your field that you want to actually connect with, we then share and um, connect you with the right people. Um, and then the first thing is just to like send a question over to us. We post it onto the platform. Then you can. Instead of asking that question, you can then join the thread and actually join the conversation. And actually, oh, that sounds really interesting. And then join in who's in that conversation. We give that advice quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, so you're not actually putting yourself out there and asking the question. You're actually just joining the conversation. And that gets a lot. And they, they'd be the best tip, to, I would say, to do. The one other thing is be consistent. I noticed that just going back to if you want to develop a network on Twitter, you've got to do, be there quite often. Mm. You can't just say like, oh, I'll go one day and not go from next month. It, you have to, okay, join the Tiny Voice Talk, get involved, put some things, tag some people in, but just carry on. It doesn't mean a lot every day, but it's four or five... 10 minutes every day, you 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 get a network quite quickly. Yeah, so I think for a challenge for anyone out listening who hasn't sort of developed these networks is just to go in, have a look at some of these hashtags. What we'll do is in the notes for the podcast is we will um, put a couple of these hashtags and, and some people to start following for you as a starter. So um, 
go in, have a tweet, respond to a tweet, like even like something and, and see this as part of your development plan. I think when we um, think of development plans and, and how we, you know, what's our CPD look like, we immediately think of courses. And actually, I think the best development is where you're combining a range of things. So it could be the odd course that you need to go on or you wish to go on, but it's a mix of attending conferences um, and networking falls in, you know, as part of that CPD package for yourself, listening to podcasts, attending webinars and, and um, sort of groups, like you say, come along to, if you're a, a new head or new senior leader, come along to your groups, give it a go. And, um, to me, that is part of your overall CPD network and you should be including this. Listen to a podcast on the way home. Like the, what you hear, follow that person on Twitter, engage and, and make this kind of little network. And if you want to ask a question or you want to connect further, drop people a line and ask. And my yeah. message is the worst they can say is no. And yeah, my, most of the time they won't say no. I mean... Yeah, I mean, the, the story also, what, when we started, Lucy, who's the other part head teacher chap, um, she's Dame Alison Peacock, when she was um, head teacher of Roxham School mm -hmm. in Hertfordshire. And um, she said, look, I, I love your book. Can you give us some advice how I can in implement it in the school I'm in? She answered back and she said, OK, here's some advice. This is what you should do. Um, here's some links and this is how then let me know how you get on and Lucy then got to get in contact with Alison and what happened it, it led to Lucy writing a chapter in Alison's next book about the changes she made in her school and being invited to go to conferences and things so the, the, the network is a powerful thing because when I started I can talk to the leading experts in education. I can say, oh, um, Dylan, Willen, okay, what, how do I, what's the best way of doing assessment in school? And he will always answer. Mm -hmm. And he always share his wisdom of what's going on. And he's, he's the biggest expert about assessment in the world at the moment. And those sort of things, it just don't happen. You've got this richness. If you use it in the right way, that can really develop you. Yeah, and you will get offered opportunities and then it's for you to be brave enough to say yes to the opportunity. So will you write a chapter and you think, oh, I've never written a chapter before, I'm gonna have sleepless nights now, but give it a go. Or buddy up with someone to do it, someone more experienced and say, would you, would you do it for me? I've done exactly that the first time I wrote my first chapter. I was wait, awake at night thinking, oh goodness, I can't do this call a friend will you write it with me I felt so much better and I learned so much so exactly. um, yeah reach out to people but but set you've got to step into it first you've got to take that brave first step no one's going to come and push you that way um you need to you need to do that for yourself so as I said we'll put all of this on before we Finished. I've got a couple of last questions that take us back to you and um, your achievements and aspirations. But tell us a little bit before about your conference. So this is your chance to have a little plug. When is your co next conference? When is it? Where is it? And how can people find out more? OK, our conference is on the 6th of October in Sherwood Forest, Centre Park. Particularly chosen because we, we want that wellbeing part of the conference. So it's going back. To, I mean, the reason why we chose it was we want head teachers and senior leaders to go into a space and go, ah, okay, I can stop, I can breathe, I can think what I'm doing, I can I can talk to people and discuss ideas. So that's the the thinking behind it. We want people to chat and network. And so um, it's a whole day event. We got um, fantastic speakers. We got. Um, Sam Strickland, who does is inspirational on how he talks about cultures in school, how you create those cultures, which is very important for anyone in any stage of their leadership. We have um, Helen Woodward, who is going to put her take on actually how to uh, re-engage with 
their profession after having a challenging time. We've got um, Nick Hart, who's talking about impact in school. So it's a whole divide of different inspirational speakers to get you inspired. Um, yeah, it, it, to find it, go to Heritage Chat on Eventbrite or look on our feed on Twitter. You'll probably find that we, we're doing quite a few posts. There's, we've got 12 inspirational speakers. It's going to be a great day. We've got some surprise guests as well. We've got exhibitors there. So we've got some great companies that you might not have heard of or seen that are demonstrating their new product that will, they're all being sort of like chosen by us that will make a difference in school. So I know that sounds strange, but actually we're here to support in school leaders making big changes. And actually some companies will be helpful in that. Some of them are coaching companies as well. So um, yeah, we're, very, we're as you can tell, I'm, I'm too excited about it. I'm just, it's it's going to be a great day. And 6th of October, Sherwood Forest, go to Eventbrite, head teach chat, and you can find out more information. There's more, far more information on there than I can tell you right now. Well, and I, again, we'll put the um, link to Eventbrite in the uh, podcast notes. So don't worry, you can pop into there and click on. So lastly, um, Jonathan, I'm going to ask you, these are always quite difficult questions, people seem to think, yet they're about you. So what's been your greatest achievement so far in your career? Uh, well, greatest achievement, it's, I'm very proud of Head Teach Chat. I, it was a, a mission put out about five years ago to support as many head teachers as possible. And my mission was if I could help one, then I'm I'm very proud of what we've done. Actually, we we supported so many now, and that's my greatest achievement in some ways because I love the profession. I wanted to give back. I wanted to help as many people as possible. I still think there is this goes on to the aspirational side, but there's a big job that we got to do for the future, and we're hoping that we can get a group of people that can help us to develop it in the future. But I'm, I'm so proud of what we've done and the mission that we are trying to achieve because it's a hard job and we just want to help. Great. And the next question is, do you have any aspirations that you would love to uh, achieve before you, um, you know, finish your work in education? Um, yeah, well... <laughs> I love being a teacher. I love being a leader in school. And but the problem is at the moment we got a, it's quite a divided sector, and we've got to make it appear much more connected. So we've got to team up with all aspects of the teachers, the TAs, the support staff to say, actually, this is a brilliant place to work. This is a fantastic area of education. At the moment, we're too divided. We've got so many different things going on and it's not all our fault, but we've got to get everyone connected to say, actually, we want to make a better education profession for the children. Because that's actually, at the end of the day, what we're trying, we're here for. We're here for, to making a learning, a children learning in the best environment. So my aspiration is really to connect everyone together and to work together to, to improve the standards of the education in this country. Well, so thank you. What do you reckon? Bit, bit too big? <laughs> but I think, why not? Have it go big. Um, so thank you so much, Jonathan, for your time today. I know how uh, precious your time is. And for those listening, don't forget to pop on to Twitter as your first step into your networking and follow at Head Teacher Chat. And also you can find them on Facebook and look up the event page as well. So thank you so, so much for your time. Thank you for having me.